Chapter 8. A Separate World Nearby I kept walking and counting until I didn't see anybody I knew. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I worked my way to Central Park North, then across Lenox, across 7th, across Morningside Avenue, onto Cathedral Parkway to Broadway, then down to 106th Street. I didn't calm down until I got to 103rd Street. I crossed the uptown side of Broadway and sat on a bench in the median to watch tra traffic on either side of me. In this neighborhood, not everyone was Puerto Rican. It was one big mixture of lots of different kinds of people who didn't know each other. I took out the flyer and read it. Come to a young Lord rally. Don't be oppressed. Freedom for Puerto Rico. Enough exploitation of the poor. I crumpled the flyer and tossed it in the garbage can nearby. A garbage can that wasn't overflowing. Evelyn? I looked up to see Dolores from the Five and Dime. I couldn't believe it. Dolores was with two girls and a guy. What are you doing here? She asked. I was just walking. Dolores didn't look the same. Or was it seeing her in this neighborhood that made her seem different? I must have looked different to her, too, because it took her a moment to introduce me to her friends. This is Avery. The boy was my skin color, but he wasn't Puerto Rican. He was definitely black. He was wearing sandals. Strange for a boy. Hey, I said. And this is Andrea and Maseret, Dolores introduced. I nodded and looked them over. They seemed older, like maybe 19 or 20. Andrea was really white skin, but could have been black as well. Her hair was thick and wild, so different from Dolores's. She's wearing a shift with yellow flowers and tiny beads that look like they were made of wood. The one called Messeret was cinnamon colored and had a huge afro. She was wearing a long denim skirt and had a necklace that looked like it was made out of seashells. The girls were wearing sandals too. Hi, we all said at the same time. Then we stood there until Dolores felt like she had to explain. They're working with my mother. My mom's a professor at Columbia University. Then she waited like she wanted to figure out if I knew what Columbia University was. When I didn't say anything, she went on. They're doing research for my mom. She's writing a book. Oh. I bumped into them in the grocery store. We're just going up to my house for some chips and stuff if you want to come. What else could happen today, I thought. I only come to this neighborhood to disappear because it seems anonymous to me. And who do I bump into? Dolores. I had nothing else to do. Sure, I said. We went to the apartment on 114th Street between Broadway and Amsterdam. It was an okay building, not new, but not as old as the one I lived in. This building didn't have a fire escape on the outside, but it did have an elevator. Dolores' mom came to the door the minute we entered. She was tall and thin and wore glasses. Her hair wasn't straightened. It was in a small afro. Dolores introduced us. Nice to meet you, Evelyn. Come on in, everybody. Dolores, why don't you get some, why don't you get everybody a cold drink? Then she pointedly looked at the three college students. We'll get started. I'll be in my office. And she turned away. Dolores waited until she was out of earshot. My mom's writing about slaves. That's why she treats me like one. Everybody laughed. We followed her into the living room. I couldn't help noticing the beige curtains, the soft gray rugs, and the apricot sofa. Not a single rose in sight. I took a peek into what I guess was Dolores' room. 
She had paisley she had a paisley bedspread and an old fashioned dresser with a lava lamp on it. The walls were covered with posters of people I didn't know. A hippie looking black guy with a big afro playing the guitar, a drawing of a white guy with swaths of different color hair, and pictures of Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. Sit down. I'll get some juice for everyone, said Dolores as she sailed at the door. We sat, silently. How about those gays at Stonewall Inn, said Messeret. I know, said Avery. Gay people fighting for their rights? I mean, usually they don't even want to be found out. Then he started singing that song about how great it was to do your own thing. Everybody has the right to live the way they want to, added Andrea, ser seriously. I was hoping they didn't look at me because I had no idea what they were talking about. But they did look at me and waited for me to say something. And out of nowhere came, my grandmother has a album full of old photos of people being killed in Puerto Rico. Silence. Now they didn't know what I was talking about. Juice, anyone? Dolores entered with a tray of drinks. I stood up. I gotta go, I said. I have to get home. Wait, Dolores said, putting down the drinks. I wondered if she was happy that I was leaving. I'll show you to the door. See you tomorrow, I said quietly. I walked, still counting to keep calm as I approached El Borio. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I knew when I was getting into my neighborhood because of the noise and because I could smell the garbage overflowing in the trash cans. Nobody was home when I arrived. It was evening. Everyone was still, was probably still at the bodega. I was exhausted. I opened the sofa bed and slipped in, wondering if it was possible to sleep angry.